Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today we're going to be covering tasks. In my previous videos, I have covered epics and stories, but there's also a task in Jura, along with a bug and a subtask, which we're going to be covering in future videos. So, if you haven't already, please make sure you smash that subscribe button, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions about anything that I cover, please let me know in the comments section below. All right, so for this video, we're gonna navigate our way onto our trusty Agile coach, which is Atlassian.com slash Agile, and let's go see what Atlassian has for tasks. Now, I'm gonna come over and try to see if I can find anything related to tasks, and I see user stories, I see epics and stories, which we've already covered, but I don't see anything on tasks, and I think that's pretty strange. And so, given that there isn't anything in the Atlassian Agile coach, I'm going to take the liberty to kind of just give you my two cents and I'm going to share the guidance that I usually give to the clients that I consult with and just in general to people that work with me. So coming back into Jira and just to kind of level set what we're talking about here is when I go and create a, a an issue in Jira, you have a couple of options by default out of the box. You can have your story, you have a task, a bug, an epic, and I added an initiative, but that's not in scope for this video. What I want to point out is the task and the stories are siblings in Jira. If you recall back from another video where I talked about the hierarchy in Jira, you should know that epics are at the highest. We got epics, and then we have a story, a task, and a bug, and then we have a subtask at a third layer. So that's that triple layer hierarchy that's built into Jira by default. But in Agile, you have more like a, an epic, a feature, a user story, and then a task. And so tasks in Jira are different than the subtask. The subtask is more of what Agile talks about when they refer to a task, but a task in Jira is different because that task is a sibling of the story, so they can't be nested underneath. That's what the subtask is referred for. So that begs the question, what is the purpose of the task in Jira? Great question, and one that I kind of just want to give you some general guidance as to what I have found effective. So when we're talking about a story, I have mentioned that a story should be value-added work. The stories are going to be the, the efforts that your team are using calories to basically deliver value to your company, to your team, right? These are the things that you're going to essentially sell and money is going to come into your company. You're going to sell for hopefully a profit or some revenue. Money's coming in. Your team is developing code. They're going to be opening up a branch. They're going to be committing against that branch and they're going to do, be doing a pull request. And you're going to be able to see all that if you have your Git repository integrated with Jira. Now a task, however, is work that your team is still doing, preferably within a sprint, but the key indicator here is it's non-value added. It's just unnecessary support task. It's work that is still part of the bigger picture. It's still planned into your sprint. Your team still needs to use calories to basically work on that piece of work, but it's not value added. So a common example that I like to give teams is, let's assume that you're building a website and so you have a couple of stories to build the website, but you just can't like bring the website to just instant existence. You have to host it somewhere. You have to go and get a domain. You have to go and get a host and uh, maybe a database, right? So there's a couple of administrative tasks, if you will, that are required so that you can launch your website or do whatever stories that developers have to do with respect to uh, uh, building a website. So I want you to consider and understand that tasks are non-value added work, but it's basically a necessary evil, okay? And that's essentially how I explain tasks to teams. And now the next question that teams usually ask me is like, well, do they still need story points and things of that nature? to which I usually reply with yes. It's still a good idea because your team is going to be, again, using up calories, right? They're gonna be using up cycles of effort and, and not all work is created equal. And you don't want your team to basically go spend half a sprint 
doing administrative work, right? You want to you want to make sure that the scales are balanced. And so I recommend that whether it's a story or whether it's a task, you make sure that you're still given story points. Now, tasks by default won't have that story point value enabled. That field could be put on, but the little story point section, that little bubble in Jira, if you recall back from one of our previous videos and you go look at our backlog, this little bubble is not usually present. As, as I can show here in this, uh, this is a bug. You'll notice that it doesn't have the ability to have story points added to it. So if you want to add story points, you're going to want to reference my video where I teach you how to enable story points on different issue types that aren't your stories or your epics. Once you do that, you'll be able to add stories to basically your bugs, to your tasks, to whatever you want. But it's still generally a good practice to add story points to wherever your team is going to be spending effort in. Just so, just for the purpose of, again, not all work is created equal. And uh, me as a Scrum Master, I want to understand what's the level of effort here for, regardless of whether you're adding value to the company or not, time is going to be spent on something. I want to know the complexity, the effort, the um, just how long, it, how, how do I need to accommodate my sprint to bring in this, especially on non-value added work. So anyways, that's pretty much it for this video. If you haven't already, please smash that subscribe button, drop a like if you found value. And if you have any questions about anything that I covered in this video, please let me know in the comment section below. And most importantly, I want to hear from you. What are you using tasks for? That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.